welcome to Driving Participation with Beth Podovsky, a podcast for sharing great ideas that get people involved and active in organizations. Join us to learn what marketers and fundraisers around the country are doing to get people to show up, stick around, and give back. Hello, this is Beth Brodovsky, and welcome to the last episode of Driving Participation for 2015. I hope you had a terrific year. Mine was very interesting with some great events, opportunities, and challenges. I have a million ideas, and even though I create and teach marketing, I still struggle with some of the same things that many of you do when it comes to getting things done. So I thought I would take this last show of the year to help us all get ready for next year. I saw a post from last year by Courtney Hunt of the Denovati Group about her marketing resolutions for the new year. I loved it, and that gave me the idea to ask the same question of the people that I know. I tried something fun and told people that they could email or send me an audio recording. So today, I'll be reading you the emails and sharing the audio messages that were sent in, along with some of my comments about what people had to say. So let's kick off our resolutions with Jory Barad, Director of Development and Public Relations at The Village. My number one marketing resolution for 2016 is to acquire new donors through concerted acquisition marketing efforts. And in particular, those new donors will be younger generation donors. I'm thinking Beth will have some great ideas on how I might accomplish that resolution. Right, Beth? Thanks, Jory. I think we can all agree on this one. Whether you're looking for new donors, students, members, or even clients, it's so easy to fall into what I call a seizure of marketing. I have to give credit to Michael Gerber, the author of The E-Myth Revisited, for inspiring that term. Jury, I promise to do a whole show on this topic next year. In the meantime, I know I'll be working on this too. 2015 was a year of building for me. I wrote the Build Your Brand course, and we reconstructed the Nonprofit Toolkit website, and I'll be launching both of those in January. So the next step for us is to grow our list and promote what we're doing, just like all of you have to do. The first thing I'll be trying in 2016 is a consistent Facebook ad campaign. I'm going to be testing out webinars and giveaways to build an email list. I've been learning a lot about social ads, and I'll be sure to report back on it after I have done what Jury suggests and run it consistently. Next, I heard from David Rode, the executive director for Pitch In for Baseball. David wrote in to say, my number one resolution is a simple one. Get out of the office more because that is where the real opportunities are. David, that is great advice. One of the best things I learned in my first year of business was to just show up. I keep signing up and attending events, even when I'd so much rather stay home. My family would ask me, how was it when I got home? And I would say, I'll let you know in two years. Relationships take time to build and pay off. In fact, someone I met at an absolutely horrible event years ago has become my best friend. Now, I'm an extrovert, so getting out and mingling with strangers is actually fun for me, but it's still hard to make the time when there's so much to do at the office. I always try and tell myself that getting out today makes sure that I'm still in business tomorrow, and when I'm in the office too much, we always feel the pain later. Plus, my staff really appreciates the quiet when I'm gone. Margot O'Malley had thoughts along the same lines as David. She's going to focus on relationships in 2016. Hi, Beth. This is Margot O'Malley. My number one marketing resolution for 2016 is to make sure that I stay focused on maintaining and strengthening the relationships that I already have even as I am working on creating new ones, because it's so much easier to maintain or keep a friendship, a donor relationship, a client, what have you, so much easier to keep one you already have than it is to get a new one. So I want to be sure that I'm taking good care of the ones I've already got. Thanks for asking. It's always a juggle to balance the care and feeding of relationships you already have with the effort of going out and creating new ones. And Sometimes one side of that is easier than the other. Some people like the hunt of finding new people and want to turn them over and then go back out hunting, but other people dread the idea of calling or meeting strangers and would much prefer to check in on a friend or at least do just a warm call. 
if you have to do both sides, this is a good year to find ways to make your less favorite side easier and more fun. I've been using LinkedIn a ton to create warm relationships from strangers. That's how I got Kate Coleman, the executive VP of strategy for the YMCA and a ton of other guests onto this podcast. This year, I'm going to get Bryn Tillman, a social selling expert and LinkedIn genius on the show to share her techniques for creating and maintaining relationships using this tool. LinkedIn is magical, and I want to share some of the techniques that I use to get total strangers into my network. Michael Bellavia, the CEO of Helps Good, wrote in with a great idea. Michael was my guest on episode 31, and his firm is responsible for the beautiful new ads for the Ad Council's Love Has No Labels campaign. Michael says, my number one marketing resolution for 2015 is to actively listen. Everything moves so fast nowadays. You need to challenge your autopilot marketing operations and consistently reassess if what worked before will work again. Add to that, nonprofits aren't usually known for moving quickly. The challenge is balancing new strategies and tactics with tried and true methods while not reacting to flavor of the month marketing gimmicks. Michael, I totally agree. And this can be really hard when the new thing you need to do seems to show up every day. There's, there's always something that's coming out that someone is saying, try this or try that. It seems like there's always something that's being added and, and nothing's ever being taken away. People always say to me, well, nobody does print anymore. Well, that's not true. People are still doing print and print magazines and direct mail and web and email and social. There's so much and it's, it's hard to know where to set the limit and how to focus. So let's all take a deep cleansing breath together and agree to slow down enough to make good choices aligned to our goals. I just finished an intensive course for entrepreneurs and in a room full of idea people, things can get off track really quickly. Every day they put up one of those giant pieces of sticky note paper that people use in presentations with the words parking lot on the top. Any ideas that might be interesting, but we're not moving the current discussion forward, got listed there for later review. I love that idea, and I suggest we all create an idea parking lot for our marketing to make sure that we put our effort into the things that we can do 100%, rather than trying to fill 10 buckets and only getting each of them to 60%, and then never really getting the benefit of what we've created because it's all sort of almost there and not quite done and not really focused on fully. Sandy Reese of Get Fully Funded shared this with me. My biggest goal for marketing in the new year for nonprofits is for them to learn to speak the language of donors. I think there's way too many nonprofits that have a lot of communications that are very egocentric. In other words, they talk about their programs, they talk about their process, everything is we, 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 us, us, us. It's like some kind of fundraising French. It's crazy. What I wish that they would learn how to do is speak in language that's more about outcomes and impact, because those are the things that donors really want to know about. Those are the things that donors care about. And I think when we can learn to speak in language, to communicate those things that donors are most interested in, we will do a better job of connecting with them, a better job of engaging them, and we'll see donations go up. That is a great resolution, Sandy. It's really hard to stop talking about ourselves. It's human nature to do that. I mean, look at any website, nonprofit or corporate, and most of them say, we do this and we do that. I can see it so clearly on other websites, and yet I know I still do this on my own site. Please don't go look. You know, it's always easy to fix other people's problems, but redoing our website and working on our language is also one of my goals for 2016. If you listen to this podcast regularly at all, you know that one of my favorite sayings is that nobody wants to fund your existence, they want to fund your impact. This year, when we work on our own marketing materials, I'm really going to focus on showing the impact of the work we do too. 
Steve Varnum, who is the Director of Communications and Marketing at the New Hampshire Community Loan Fund, has a really specific goal for his communications this year. Steve said, so many nonprofits use the word investment when seeking donations and grant funding, such as invest in young women by supporting us, that it's the dominant frame. Nonprofit plus the word invest seems to equal donate. In 2016, Steve says, our nonprofit, the New Hampshire Community Loan Fund, will begin marketing Opportunity NH Investments. These are investments into the Community Loan Fund that pay annual fixed interest financial returns while achieving measurable social results. Every dollar invested in us is loaned into NH's communities in ways that will help low and moderate income families. So it's a true double bottom line. Our resolution is to help potential investors understand that when this nonprofit says invest, we're talking about a for real investment, not a donation. I love that Steve has a detailed goal. Changing perception in this way requires consistent messaging that connects with the right audience. It's going to take time, but being able to own a big idea can really pay off in deeply connected advocates of your organization. Good luck, Steve, and be sure to let me know what you do to make this happen. Amanda Kaiser from Kaiser Insights shared some great perspective on how we get stuck looking for perfection. Hi, Beth. This is Amanda Kaiser. I'm so happy you asked what my number one marketing resolution for 2016 is. I like to put things out in the world that look good, work well, and are hopefully a little bit more than just coherent. But I feel like this slows me down. I create content for association professionals, and I want to experiment with more ways to do this effectively. And for those of us with small staff, it can be a challenge to create tons of great content with minimal resources. I just heard this really interesting mantra by the folks over at the innovation company IDEO. They say, don't get ready get started. And I get this. I run a blog. I post about three times a week and nothing could have prepared me for starting that blog. I had to sit down and write a hundred blog posts before I started to even hit my groove. So my plan for 2016 is to experiment more. I want to do the best I can in the time that I have, but continue to play with different topics and formats. And hopefully over time, I'll be able to see what my audience likes and serve them better. So here's to a great 2016. Thanks. Being willing to experiment is an important milestone for any organization. It signals a shift from acting out of fear of losing and into playing to win. I could probably do a whole show on this topic too. I know I personally am not a gambler or a huge risk taker. I hate to lose my money. And I really hate to spend a client's money and then have it not pay off. But I found that if I only do things that I'm sure will work, I miss out on things that could work better or bigger or faster. So to balance out my need for success with the need to explore, I'm going to do two things in 2016. First, I'm going to set a budget for testing. Second, It's not a test if you can't evaluate the results. So I am not going to spend a nickel on anything that I can't track to see what happened. Here's one from Elizabeth Engel. She says, my biggest resolution for the association community with regards to marketing would be for us to stop talking about segmentation and personalization and start doing it. We know it's important, but we're full of excuses for why we don't do it. And no, by personalization, I don't mean sending an email to Dear Elizabeth as opposed to Dear Colleague. We make excuses like, we don't have the data, our systems won't support it, it takes too much time, our members respond to our spray and pray tactics, so we don't need to worry about it, we don't know how, etc. It's 2016, Elizabeth says, no more excuses. Figure out how to collect and use the necessary data to allow you to find out what your members and other audiences care about, need, and want to know, and then serve that and only that to them. Elizabeth focuses on associations, but this advice applies to any organization. I know this idea probably sparks two feelings. One, that it's, it is a lot of work and you may have no idea how to start. And two, 
the fear that if you don't send everything to everyone, that someone who didn't get your email might have wanted to go to that event or be involved in that program. So I'm here to say that this might be a place that you could start with some of Amanda's experimentation that she suggested. It would really be hard to go from a single list of everyone that gets everything into the full segmentation that Elizabeth is recommending. I get that. But you don't have to take it all in one leap. Look in your organization for a group of people who have really different interests than everyone else. People that when you go to write the copy for something, you find yourself having to really broaden your language to include them and maybe water down your message so it kind of works for everyone. If you could slice off just that group to start, slice them off on their own, you could speak specifically to them and their needs, and then it will help you speak to the rest of your group a little bit more directly and clearly. I sometimes wonder if I need to do this with my associations and my nonprofits. I feel like the content here is relevant to both groups, but I often find myself qualifying the idea of members to the nonprofit listeners and the idea of fundraising to the association listeners. I would love to know what all of you listeners actually think about that. Rachel Hutchison from Blackboard wrote in with something that I think I need to tattoo on myself. Rachel says, my number one resolution for marketing in 2016 is to keep things simple. Sometimes we get so caught up in how to communicate something, what words to use, what channel is the best, that we forget the basics, communicating the key message. So my resolution for 2016 is to try to always focus on the core message, keeping it simple and making sure that I share it appropriately without letting it get bogged down in the details. If more people did this, I think we'd all be in a better place. Yes, Rachel, I am so with you. In that entrepreneur class I mentioned earlier, they had us give pitches and descriptions of our businesses in 30 seconds to three minutes over and over again throughout the long three months of class. We all came in sure we were brilliant at explaining what we do and only ended up having people stare blankly at us when we described our work. At the end of class, we all had three minutes to do a final presentation, and the difference was amazing. Some people in the class, I literally had no idea what they did until that day. So my suggestion to you to help you be simple and clearly focus on your core message in a way that connects with people is to write out your core message, what you do in bullet points, no sentences allowed. Then say it out loud. Do it by yourself and then do it for people who have no idea what to, what you do. Try it on your father-in-law, your grandmother, and your eight-year-old neighbor. I mean it. You have to say it out loud until everyone gets it and you can cruise through saying what you mean without stumbling over it or reverting to industry jargon. I have to work on all these things myself, and I feel like I could add a whole other list of my own to the things that I'm resolving to do better this year. Number one on my list, however, is this, consistent action. Action beats perfection. Action beats intention. Action beats all the others who thought they should, but didn't. An action applied consistency delivers results. I know this, and yet it's still so hard to do. The one thing I feel like I have finally learned this year is that indecision is more damaging than making a bad decision. I take forever to make decisions. I always want to be perfect and make the right decision. But that time that I spend waffling back and forth, evaluating what to do, nothing is happening. I started this podcast the month that I was hosting my son's wedding at my house. I signed up for this crazy intense entrepreneurship program when my daughter-in-law was due to have a baby. I wrote my course on branding, even though every day I questioned my sanity. And now I'm thinking of turning everything that I've learned about participation from this podcast into a book. I think that's crazy, which probably means I should do it. And finally, I will end this list with a note from a friend. Barb Boche of Boche Design and Communications has been my business mentor for nearly 20 years. She is a brand marketer working with huge corporate clients and has been in business 30 years. Listen to what she has to say. My number one resolution for 2016 is to make sure that I can define exactly what our company does and the benefits it offers to using our services. 
So there you go. Everyone struggles with this. Everyone, even successful longtime businesses. People think that you figure it out, check it off the list and charge forward, but it's just not like that. Running a business or an organization has ups and downs, twists and turns, and you need to evaluate where you stand constantly. So all I can tell you for this one is that if you're frustrated that you thought you had it figured out and now you're not so sure, welcome to the club. Keep asking for feedback, clarifying and simplifying. You may never be done. And honestly, I hope you're not because when you stop trying to be better, you stop getting better. And finally, I want to give you a sneak peek at what I have planned for you in 2016. I am sure you know I talk about branding a lot on the podcast. I truly believe in the power of branding to help organizations make their mark in the world. I've had some great people on who have shared the impact of their branding efforts with you. From the Histiocytosis Association, the Dauphin County Library System, the New Hampshire Community Loan Fund, and Pierce College to big national brands like the Salvation Army and the YMCA. Every one of them has said that branding has helped their organizations connect with their community. They work more efficiently, more people understand what they do and why they do it, and they are creating more impactful programs. And some have even seen a direct impact on donations. Every one of them had the benefit of working with a consultant to guide them through the process. And if this is something that you'll be looking for this year, I can take on one or two clients for branding this year. If you're thinking about it, I'd be happy to talk to you about our process. Give me a call or send me an email. Last year, however, I got really frustrated with how many people have benefited from branding and how many of you are just not in a position to get the help you need right now. So I locked myself in my house and every weekend for nearly six months, I wrote out our process into a do-it-yourself course. I've had a number of people go through the program and test it out, and I've gotten really great feedback. In January, we'll be opening up the course again in its new location on a beautiful learning management platform. If you have enjoyed my episodes about branding and wish that there was an affordable way for you to get that kind of impact, I wrote this course for you. Keep listening to the show for more details in the next few weeks. And if you want to be sure to get on the early list for bonuses, you can text the word branding to 33444 and you'll get another bonus cheat sheet and be added to my first call list for launch. Thanks for listening. And if I can ever help you with a question or a project, please feel free to email me at Beth, B-E-T-H, at iris, I-R-I-S, creative.com. Have a wonderful 2016. Thank you for listening to Driving Participation. For more strategies to boost involvement in your organization, subscribe in iTunes and follow Beth Brodowski on Twitter. Driving Participation is a production of Iris Creative Group Incorporated. Communication builds community.